Hey, and welcome to the next video in my series on HTML and CSS for beginners. My name's Kevin, and in this video, I'm really excited about it. We're going to be looking at some CSS. We're going to be adding colors and making changes to our fonts and making the page look cool. So let's get started. Okay, so CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and we're going to be getting into what really that means uh, as we go through this video a little bit. But the most important thing is the end there, Style Sheets, it means we can style our pages. HTML is all about putting the content on our page. We're putting our text, we're putting our pictures, and we're putting them in the order we roughly want them to appear. CSS is what we use to make it actually look like a website instead of something boring like we see on the screen right now. We can change our colors, we can change our fonts, and really importantly, it's what we use to create our layouts and actually make a real layout instead of just having one thing fall one after the other. So in this video, we're really just starting off with a taste of CSS. I just want to show you sort of what it can do, and in the next few videos, we're really going to be trying to harness CSS and take full advantage of it. So let's do our first little bit of something fun. Um, my first web page, I think it doesn't look good in black, and I want to change the color of it. So one thing I can do is I can come into my h1 tag here and add a style attribute and anything I put inside of here is going to be CSS. The first thing I'm going to do in here is I'm going to take the word color and let's make this red. I'm going to save that and refresh and look at that. It's red. So uh, let's analyze this just a little bit. I'm zooming in here. I just want to make it nice and big. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the CSS. So the, this right here is the property that I want to modify. I want to modify the color property, and this is the value that I want to assign it. So I am telling it that the color property of my H1 is red. Really important here is I'm putting the little colon. So I'm saying color colon red. And then I'm putting a semicolon at the end. And this is telling it that this rule is finished. And now I can actually come in and do another rule. So I'm going to change the size of my text. Font size, not phys, font size. Uh, let's make it 50 pixels. We'll make it really big. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so it's all on one line. There we go. Put my semicolon, save that, and let's refresh again. And you saw it got bigger. Or let's go and make it really small, 10 pixels. Save. And now it's really tiny. If I didn't have this semicolon here, the whole thing would stop working. So let's take out that, refresh, and you can see it goes back to normal. And the reason for that is it doesn't understand what's going on here. Without the semicolon, this is looking at it as the color is red font size 10 pixels, which it just doesn't understand. Font size isn't a color. So I'm going to put that uh, semicolon back there. So this is one property. I'm taking my color property and I'm changing it to red and I am taking my font size and I'm assigning it a pixel value of 10 or my font size is 10 pixels and there we go it's 10 pixels and let's bring that back up to about 40 super let's come look at this first paragraph and do a little bit more here so I have my p and so I'm going to do a style tag is equal to and let's change the color to blue and let's change the font size to 21 pixels and let's look at another one font family and uh, I'm just going to do a sa serif so let's save that and refresh and you can see it's gone to blue it's become 21 pixels and now I've added this new one font family sa serif so if you're not familiar with the term sans serif, um, this is a serif font. It has these little serif-y things. They're called serifs. I'm not really sure how else to describe them. These little flares that come off the end of the letters. Uh, sans serif, it's just like solid bars. There's no little pieces that fly off the ends of things. And just by putting sans serif like this, I'm not actually picking what font I want to use. I'm just going back to a system default. So normally you'd actually say I want to use this one specific font. Just like for colors in general, we wouldn't want to say something like blue. For red, for example, I could do FF0000, save, and it's going to look exactly the same. Whoops, I don't want an S there. Save, and there we go. Um, and for blue, I could put number sign, zero, zero, whoops, zero, 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 zero. 
zero zero f f and it's still blue um, what these are this is called a hex hexadecimal uh, which references colors if I put this as f f it's going to change colors it becomes that and if I do f f here we won't actually see it because it's going to become white so my text is still there but it's become white and then uh, there's a whole bunch of things I could do like uh, d d d d d d they don't have to be capitals um, and it becomes gray if I do 555 five, it becomes dark gray um, so there's this whole hexadecimal code that we can use and the main reason is you know who knows you know this is red and I know that just because I've done it so many times but uh, if I come in here and I put red like that well it's red but what if I want a different red that's you know it's too bright it's hard you can't really control it with a keyword like this so if I instead come in with ff three three zero zero I get more whoops hmm let's do uh, let's do ff five five zero zero it's becoming a bit more orangey and uh, let's make that like a five five two more pinky uh, making really subtle changes right now but you get the idea um, this is much better and if you're going where can I figure all this out we can do a color picker HTML into Google And we can come right here to the W3 Schools color picker. And I have a nice little color picker here that's a very, no, it's not perfect, but it gives me a nice um, idea. And it gives me all the different shades. So I come and I can click on the dark red here. And then I can pick and I can just copy and paste. So let's say I want this dark red. I can copy that and paste that here. And then for my text, let's say I actually want something that looks more like this one. I can copy that. Let's go back to my page. Uh, here's my text. Paste that in there. Save. And there's the color on my text. And I think that looks really nice. So I'm coming through here and I'm making a few changes. But one thing that's really important and powerful about CSS is the whole cascade thing. And what it means is the styles cascade down through my HTML elements. So here I have my body and everything is inside my body. So what I could do is on my body, I could give this some style. So let's say style is equal to, and I'm gonna do a background hyphen color. And you can probably guess what this does. I'm gonna make my background color black, but let's use the zero, zero, zero. Uh, save that and hit refresh, and I have a nice black color. And that affects my whole page. Remember, the body is everything we see on the screen. So if I change the background color of that, everything I see on my screen will get a black background. But even cooler than this is now if I come in and I do color FFF, uh, this is what I would use to change my text color. And why they didn't make it text color, I don't know. I wish they had, but we just have color to change our text color. Uh, this is going to come in cascade down through everything else. So I'm actually going to take this off for the moment. Uh, let's just delete the color. We'll keep the font size and we'll take this color off as well. I'm going to save all that and hit refresh and all of my text becomes white. And I could come onto here and say, uh, let's even delete. We don't need any of this. Oops, that's my P. Uh, so my background color is black. My color is there, uh, let's say font size is 21 pixels. Save that, refresh, and then all my paragraphs become 21 pixels. And then I could come in and say that my font family, family is a sa ser whoops, sa hyphen serif. Save that, and all of my text is becoming sa serif text. So. I'm applying it to my body and that's these styles are cascading down from my body into all these other things that are inside my body. You'll notice the one thing that isn't changing colors uh, with this color white is my links. My links are staying like that and we're going to take a look at styling links in a future video. Now one thing that's also really important to know about the cascade is you can, if you're more specific, you can overwrite what's going on. So my H1, I want this to be a different color so let's come over here to my color picker and get a orange color I'm gonna go with this one copy that 
and h1 style i'm going to make the color of my h1 save and that can change and then let's come down to the second paragraph so i'll leave my first paragraph alone color let's make it that same orange oops and i forgot my style is equal to there we go save that and now that's becoming orange so what's happening is my body starts off and it goes oh well everything here needs to be white so my color is set to white so everything inside of this is going to become white and then it comes to here and it goes this should be white oh wait no this needs to be orange and then that becomes orange we close my h1 so it's stopping that style we get to my paragraph and it goes okay well this is in my body and everything in my body should be white so this is white and then we keep going we keep going okay another paragraph it should be white oh wait this shouldn't be orange because this has its own style that styles ending with my paragraph and then this last one down here at the end keeps the white color so that's it for this video quick introduction to css show you a little bit of what it can do and how it can work so i really encourage you to play around with this a little bit i'm going to put a link down in the description below that gives you a whole bunch of the css properties that you can play around with and experiment with but maybe you want to hold off until the next video for that one because there we're really going to see the power of css and start harnessing it and doing some really fun things so I really look forward to seeing you over there in the next video, but until then, make sure you leave a comment down below. If you have any questions, comments, just tell me, you know, say hi. I'd love to say hi back and uh, like the video if you've enjoyed it and whatever you do, don't stop now.